you know things are working when Europe and China both say the US isn't playing fair. Within the past three weeks, both Europe and China have said that Biden's IRA is not fair play for the global community. There's too many, there's too much money being invested into North American battery factories and the EV revolution. It seems as though they're getting jealous. When I started this YouTube channel, just over a year and a half ago, I was very concerned at the time about China's dominance of the electric car and in particular, the manufacturing of lithium batteries. Their dominance, I considered a monopoly, which could unsettle the world and give China too much power. Well, I was concerned at the time that the US would lose its automotive industry. And all of a sudden, in the last six months, in fact, more like in the last two months, things have completely started to change in the United States. I'm nowhere near as concerned as I was when I started this channel. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. I'm the Electric Viking. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Thanks for tuning in. And you know what? This is good news. This is really good news. I was roasted a bit by a fair few of you for my support, not necessarily of any political party. I don't uh, pro pro proclaim to support Biden or Trump or anyone else, but my support of the bill, the IRA bill, the investment into renewable energy, into electric cars, into battery factories. I was in support of it. Yeah, not all of it. I don't know all of all the details, just the part that concerns this channel, which was electric cars, batteries, renewable energy, charging stations being built all over the US. I thought that was critical and vitally important. That's why I supported it. And a lot of you um, came out and said I was wrong. Maybe I am, but things have changed in a very big way in the US within the last well, just within the last few months. I mean, we're talking now investments upwards of potentially over $100 billion over the next five to 10 years. And we're talking about battery factories being built all over the United States. I mean, this is not just Tesla. This is Volvo, Polestar, Mercedes, Toyota. Toyota, who would have thought? Toyota, what the heck? I mean, everyone is getting in on the act now because, well, because this new bill makes it worthwhile. It makes it make sense. And also because Tesla has proven the demand for EVs. They've proven that you can make a profit selling EVs. Now, all the others are not doing, they're not making a profit right now selling their EVs, but this is a path to profitability. This is a path to a better future. And it's actually a path to something that people thought wasn't true. They thought, you know, renewable energy, they thought electric cars, that green jobs, they thought that this was a path to job destruction. When in fact, it's not. It's a path to job creation. That is the whole point. That's what's going on now. And isn't it amazing to see? Now, a new battery belt is emerging in the United States, according to Electric, as automakers from around the globe race to meet the overwhelming demand for fully electric zero emission vehicles. You know, another thing they can see happening is the writing is on the wall, right? California bans the sale of gasoline powered vehicles after 2035. GM says they're not going to build any gasoline powered vehicles after 2035. Now, New York State says we're going to do the same thing. We're going to ban the sales of Anything other than EVs after 2035. I mean, how many more states are going to follow? These are the first dominoes to fall. Everyone else will eventually follow suit. With limited production ability, planned investments to ensure the US has an adequate supply of critical EV battery components now exceeds 40 billion. That's just batteries. That's not even the cars. But that figure is only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Automakers and government leaders 
alike have set ambitious goals for the future of EVs as they look for a cleaner, more sustainable future. President Biden set a goal for 50% of overall vehicle sales to be electric by 2030. I believe that goal is a um, pretty low level goal, to be honest. But I mean, a lot of people in the US thought that was crazy. Toyota still thinks it's crazy. Toyota is saying that that's un it's unachievable. <laughs> I mean, can, can you believe this? Unachievable in 20, that's eight years away. I mean, like, shock, it's shocking to me that these guys still haven't come to the party. But hey, at least even they are investing m many billions now into EV production in the US. Since the administration passed this bill, a landmark investment which is supporting the transition and easing the difficulty of manufacturing EVs and batteries in the US. And also, I mean, of course, this bill doesn't just do that. It goes further than that. It supports mining of critical materials that are needed. It supports refining of those materials. I mean, look, Tesla's doing, it's going to do refining itself. It's going to refine the materials itself. And of course, it had to have been influenced by the bill somewhat. The bipartisan infrastructure law, which was signed into law in November in 2021, includes $90 billion in funding to modernize public transport and another $7.5 billion in investments to build an EV charging network across the US. Now, EV charging networks were already being built out all over the US by Tesla and other private companies, but this is just going to speed that up, make this happen quicker. One of the biggest problems automakers faced initially was access to semiconductors, says Electric. The Chips and Science Act was passed to address this, providing $52.7 in investments to establish a reliable domestic supply chain. I'm not so convinced on that one. That's going to take many, many years to see how that actually pays off or if it pays off, but it could. We'll see. Let me know. What do you think about the Chips part of this act? And then the recently passed Inflation Reduction Act, signed into law on August the 16th of this year, invests $369 billion US dollars to build a clean, sustainable economy, including tax credits for EV buyers. Now, I know a lot of you don't support tax credits for electric cars, and I can understand where you're coming from there. However, US automakers, such as General Motors, have put into place big plans to provide EVs for everyone, affordable EVs for everyone, while looking for to mirror the success of Tesla, who delivered 343,000 EVs in the third quarter. They're on track, they say, to, to deliver 500,000 in the fourth quarter of this year. I mean, that is crazy. Now, what is even crazier about that number is the fact that, what, a few years ago, Tesla was not making a profit. Last year, they made a profit only pretty much thanks to the fact they were getting paid a lot of money for their Zev credits. And now they're making a profit not only from Zev credits, they're going to make about $1.4 billion this year, but also on their cars. The fact that they've become one of the most profitable automakers on the planet in profitability per car is quite a staggering feat. Now, clearly, GM, Ford, the others, they need a bit of a help to make this happen. I mean, for example, GM just got a $2.5 billion loan from the US government to build one of its battery factories. And now with every automaker, well, pretty much nearly every automaker around the world saying they're going electric, some more so than others, this requires a lot of batteries. And of course, we also need batteries for energy storage. We also need batteries for home storage, for commercial storage, for grid storage. A new research report from the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas highlights the significant investments automakers are pouring into the US to scale EV battery production. And those investments now exceed $40 billion. We've got factories being built by Ford and SK Innovation, factories being built by General Motors and LG Chem, factories being built by Tesla, Panasonic, Mercedes, Toyota. I mean, the list goes on and on. Now, according to this report from the bank, U.S. electric vehicle battery capacity additions in the U.S. were minuscule compared to the past few years. The federal institution points out, U.S. capacity additions were sporadic until recently when the pace of new announcements picked up. Six new facilities worth more than $5 billion were announced from 2018 to 2020. Now, the thing is, it's not just automakers doing this. I've made numerous videos on this channel. You've got other companies, battery companies coming in, SK on, 
you've also got Volkswagen building a battery plant and they're building an EV plant as well. I mean, then you've got Goshan High Tech coming and building an LFP battery plant. Then you've got local LFP battery technology, which is actually the best LFP battery technology I have seen in the world by a significant margin. I mean, that battery technology actually could change the game completely for the US. If you haven't seen the video I made about that, you need to see it. It's absolutely next level. And those, those guys are planning on building battery factories all over the United States. And now with this kind of bill in place to support them, it's much more likely they'll be able to build those battery factories out at a much quicker pace. All in all, you've got to say, this is really good news. It's going to support, I mean, thousands and thousands of jobs, thousands and thousands of jobs all over the US, not just in certain places. I think this is the battery rush. This is the EV car rush. It's not just going to be China now. The US is coming to the party. I know Europe's doing some as well, but really it's actually gotten big in the US over the last few months. It's outpacing the investments in Europe, which is surprising. That wasn't the case at all 12 months ago. Now things have changed in the United States in a big way. And Canada, you guys as well. I believe Tesla's next Gigafactory is almost certainly going to be built in Ontario in Canada, right next to some of the world's biggest mines, which they'll get, they're gonna need for their battery production, for their vehicle production. So things as well, I mean, GM have invested in Canada. Other companies are investing in Canada. A lot's coming to you guys too. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.